Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Fly. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. I am Pointless, and this is the first episode we're taping in June. Woo woo! All right, so happy Pride Month, Gabies. Yes, I said Gabies. If you're LGBTQIAPXYZ, whatever, I am ignorantly calling you all gay when I use the term Gabies, but I do know better. Okay, so first things first, as this is the month of June and it is Pride Month, I just have to say that I will not be attending NYC Pride this year. Usually, that is something that I look forward to every summer, going to New York, going to pride but this year it's not happening like I even had my days requested off from both my jobs and I'm sitting here patiently waiting for information to drop from Chutney Pride but after going to this for a few years I kind of figured something was up because like I haven't seen anything from Chutney Pride in regards to NYC Pride I haven't seen not a flyer not a blip not a blop nothing and usually they drop their shit from b- the year start if not before then so yeah no go for me i mean ever since i was introduced to big truck though i've had no interest in going to the regular pride parade like just standing on the sidelines and whatever the case is but yeah since i'm not doing big truck it's like there's i'm not gonna say there's no point going to pride but that's really what made me look forward to pride even more was just that okay backtrack a little bit for those of you who have been sleeping under a rock and have no idea what the hell i'm talking about you've never heard me shamelessly plug big truck chutney pride or any of my previous episodes this is like all the hassle dazzle like big truck is how do i say big truck is is in an essence this podcast like everything that this podcast is and represents that is what big truck is to me anyways like it is gay caribbean pride it is i said gay caribbean pride (laughs) but it is gay carnival yes like real carnival with soca chutney jab dancehall etc masqueraders a big old truck loud music folks happily dancing in the street with their rainbow flags and the flag that represents their country their island specifically caribbean island i mean of course there are other people from like you know other places south america america wherever europe whoever but it is for caribbean gays (laughs) so that is all the fuss about it for me so on May 25th, Twin tagged me in a comment section of Chutney Pride's Instagram, which they confirmed what I already figured, which was that there will be no big truck in the Pride Parade this year, but this is due to increase of fees per marcher. Mind you, like, Chutney Pride has been free for participants from Rapid Kill Phillip, and I'm sure the people who march, especially the ones who march regularly, like, every year you're on the parade, like, you're alive there and well, like, ready to chip down the road probably wouldn't mind paying whatever fee it is that you know they incur or whatever but that's besides the point the truck will not be on the road for pride in protest of this and i'm sure some other foolery that we the participants have no like we don't have to worry about so my black ass will not be in new york (laughs) that weekend and needs to say i'm super bummed out about it but we got a couple good news you know things coming up um sense eight is coming back those of you who have Netflix, if you have not seen Sense8 and you're listening to this podcast, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, go find it, go watch it, like, binge watch, because that shit is coming out on the 8th. And yeah, like, this episode should be released on the 8th. 8th. I'm getting tongue tied. This episode should be released on the 8th. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if it wasn't, just know I was watching it. That's probably why I didn't get uploaded. <laughs> but. Like, yeah, it's one of those shows where, like, Sensei is so good and it's so intense because it's one of those things where you have to pay attention to everything. Like, it's one you got to keep your eyes glued to the screen when you're watching Sensei because you blink for two seconds and you probably missed, like, a whole series of shit. Like, it's fucking intense. But it's really, really, really good. Like, you're going to end up running it back if you miss anything because you're not going to want to miss it. But it's so good. And for those of you who don't know, Uh, backstory I'm really big on it because I mean it's just dope as fuck as a whole but it also incorporates some you know LGBT friendly topics and people in the show are there's a lesbian and there's a gay guy in the show then there's you know somebody that's a fruit fly fag hag whatever you want to call it and you know it's it's just a great show in general it talks about you know 
acceptance and <laughs> being yourself and being true to yourself on so many different levels like not even just on sexuality on sex on religion on who you actually are as a person it's it's just a dope ass show like i'm sitting here selling this shit just go fucking watch it like watch it if you think you're gonna go watch season three and not watch one and two don't do it just wait it's on netflix it's not going anywhere just start from the beginning watch it and you know catch up i'm probably gonna end up not watching it <laughs> now that i think about it. i'm probably gonna go watch the last couple of episodes and see what um i missed if anything well see what i forgot or anything just get like a fresher a refresher <laughs> a refresher and you know just make sure that i'm up to date on what happened on the last season so that i can know what the fuck is going on when i click play on the new season because that shit is right on top of netflix like coming soon and i'm just like oh my god but <laughs> yeah so i mean good timing too though because i just finished watching black mirror now black mirror took me so long to watch because <sighs> that that shit is, that's a mind fuck of a show like for those of you who have never seen my Black Mirror either, like, I know somebody told you to watch Black Mirror. Like, I feel like if you listen to this show, you should have somewhat similar taste to the shit that I'm into. <laughs> but that's just me being fucking ignorant. I'm pretty sure y'all probably like, bitch, I don't give a fuck about that. Like, who cares? <laughs> but um, Black Mirror is dope. Like, if you're into technology, if you're into conspiracy theories, if, if you're into life, if you're into anything, like, if you're listening to a podcast, you probably should probably, you know, give it chance give it a chance but there are short episodes and none of the episodes well i shouldn't say they have nothing to do with each other because the more you watch it you see stuff from like the previous episodes that kind of like like something like a song or something from like episode one will be in like season four episode one or something like that or like it's it's good though like they don't like it's not like you have to watch it in order but you probably should just because but son like that's another mind fuck in itself. Like the shit that they do on Black Mirror. Like, you know how <laughs> they say when you watch certain things, you should be aware of what they're telling you because it's probably something that's coming in the future or like, you know, something that they know that we don't yet know. Yeah, like Black Mirror is like that. Like the technological advancements that are in that. <sighs> I'm flustered just thinking about the shit. Like that shit is dope. Like dope, dope, dope. But yeah i it took me a while to watch it because i had to keep stopping and go oh my god no 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 oh my god what the fuck oh my god wait like is this what happens is it no that's not what happened that's not what happened yeah i was i did a lot of self-talking i talked to myself a lot like in general but that shit had me just like <laughs> nah son y- y'all bugging right now <laughs> so yes black mirror i just finished watching it so you know i cleared up my calendar a little bit as far as shows that i'm watching and you know sensei is just gonna take the cake because yeah oh speaking of i don't know if you guys have seen um or heard of (laughs) black lightning i started watching that when it first started like when it first aired and i kind of well i definitely fell off i didn't kind of i definitely fell off because hmm, i feel like i spoke about this on the show one time i don't remember probably briefly it is so cliche to me like i don't want to say it's cliche but it's just some of the stuff is just like really nigga like (laughs) this is what y'all doing but (sighs) because it is you know a black superhero i am here for it in all its glory some of the acting something something about it gives me slightly low budget you feel me like it gives me like y'all should have spent just a little bit more money on it just a just a little bit more but you know i understand times are rough y'all trying to do shit listen somebody soundcloud rapper rappers are getting they shine through black lightning okay but aside from me and my feelings about my negative feelings about the show an- another reason i'm watching it is because they have like one of the main characters is an open lesbian and i'm just like yes i i think i did talk about this on the show before i remember saying something like that i was giving her glory but yeah that is another reason why i'm just like what the fuck is gonna happen with her and her life and her girlfriend and you know like girl you gay you you know like you yes and your parents know you gay your fat your whole fat and you would oh child 
okay cool <laughs> so that's yeah if you guys haven't seen black lightning go watch it <laughs> but um on the topic of open lesbian complete left field um but not really um in april of this year trinidadian track star michelle lee Aye, is that how you say her name Aye, Aye, I, i'm sorry if i'm brutalizing this i i'm, I'm sorry i apologize i'm probably gonna fuck up a couple names because i'm reading a couple names later on in the show but um yeah so earlier this year in april she married her girlfriend here in the united states um very big congratulations to you guys on your union you know i'm always here for people coming together making it one being open and out and happy and living in your truth and living in you know i'm saying all your gayness and all of that fun stuff but there was like there was some controversy following this though because like she's trini she's from trinidad and tobago like i'm I'm gonna say that and i'm gonna leave that there just the other day was that in april where the buggery law was okay so it was probably around the same time i I probably should have fact checked before i came out here i probably can still do it but ain't nobody here to talk to y'all while i do this but we're gonna say that it was around the same time when the buggery law was passed in trinidad she got married right okay she's out here celebrating and living her best life or whatever but she also was out here winning and shit and putting trinidad on the map okay let me backtrack so She's minding her business on her private Instagram, posting pictures, living her life like any other person does with their Instagram. And some pictures were taken from her Instagram and posted in the Trinidadian Guardian and referred to her girlfriend as her female friend. Now, the wording in this article said something to the context of like compromising positions. Now... This is a grown-ass woman. Shorty was born in 92, okay? Like, <laughs> her page was private on top of that. And now her manager and other people were saying that, you know, she wasn't trying to hide anything about her personal life. I mean, she's private, but at the same time, she's never been, like, you know, trying to hide something necessary. Because I'm, like, the same way. My personal Instagram is private, but if I know you, I'm adding you, but not everybody needs to be in my business. You feel me? The paper even went so far as to freaking add her Instagram name in the article. And I'm just like, bro, like if you go online and you look it up, like (sighs) messy, messy, messy. So that annoyed me. But if you aren't familiar with the sprinter, she has like bright red dreads and she made history prior to this news breaking by winning the country's first ever gold medal. That's what I was that's what I was referencing about her doing big things. The first ever gold medal in the women's 100 meter final at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Now, this is Trinidad's first ever first <laughs> ever gold medal in the women's 100 um meter final like at the commonwealth games dog how you put your country on the map and one week that's that's in the newspaper yes big up you you did this da, 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 da. they out here shouting out everything that you did whatever whatever then next week front page news you and your oman business department like Come on, son. So I saw her tweet something about, you know, even after you do something good for the country, they still find a way to be negative. Trinidadians. Nah, girl. (laughs) Nah, that's Caribbean people. That's black people, especially when it comes to what people doing in their private time. Like, it's uh, it's sad, honestly, because you think about, okay, I'm out here working. I'm living my life the best way that I know how. Like, I am doing this, Right. I'm training, I'm, you know, all of this. Now, mind you, remember, she born 92. So, this what, 2000? So, she's 26, something, so, right? Okay, 26 years old. Cool, right? Why do you really feel like y'all need to be worried about her sex life? Like, what does it have to do with her out here running? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My girl is a sprinter. She is a track star. Like, she runs. Why do you care what she's doing with other people in the privacy of her own fucking Instagram at that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So whatever. A couple more her accolades include, but are not limited to her participation in 2016 Summer Olympics, woyoy, and placing third in the women's four by 100 meter relay at the 2015 World Championships. Um, Forget the haters. 
I mean, that's like only two things that I mentioned, and there's the other one, the third. But dog, if y'all go on her Wikipedia page, like she got medals. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She she's doing shit. Like she's out here representing Trinidad. She's living her life. She's she's living her life. Like, and some of the people like in the article after the article um dropped or whatever was talking about you know her sex life and this that and the next and how trinidad going like dog just because she's from trinidad don't mean she speak for the whole of trinidad just because she represent trinidad in sprinting don't mean she represent trinidad and their idea you know what i'm saying okay they passed the buggery law okay bomb Okay, like if you don't want to have butt sex, if you don't want to have gay sex, don't have gay sex. And I'm gonna keep saying that shit over and over again, because why are people so caught up with what y'all doing in y'all bedrooms? You know what I'm saying? This like that article basically looks like they were trying to overshadow the fact that she was out here winning. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's dumb because it's a it's a fucking like newspaper from y'all country. Like, why shouldn't y'all be focused on the positive things? Now, mind you, there were some people who gave um, positive feedback and like, you know, keep your head up, live your life or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Words of encouragement for her and basically saying, like, this was just a scheme to try and, like, overshadow what you did, which is what I just said. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, why you want to distract people from a win for your own country? Like, a woman did something big for Trinidad. Just take it and hush. Like, let her just do her shit. You know what I'm saying? But, ooh, on the topic of women kicking ass and taking names. Like, oh, sorry. Let me just give you one more shout out. Congratulations to you and your wife. You know what I'm saying? Y'all look real cute together or whatever, you know, big ups. <laughs> but um, on the topic of women kicking ass, like I said, Barbados recently got their first ever female prime minister. Yes. Let it sink in. Barbados just recently got their first ever female prime minister. Right. So, first off, the day the news dropped that she won, my timeline and these Bayesians, <laughs> okay, between Twitter and Instagram, this lady's face was all up and down my timeline. I was like, yes. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so her name, for those of you who don't know, is Mia Amor Motley. I told y'all I'm slaughtering names tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Mia Maya Amor Motley. I, I'm sorry. Don't. Don't kill me. Y'all gonna come for me. I'm sorry. But <laughs> correct me. You know, I'm I'm okay with being corrected. I don't like being loud and wrong. But Mia Amor Motley, um, she has led and won the election in Barbados for the next prime minister. And, you know, crazy enough, she's also endorsed by Bad Galleriri. Yes. Bay. Now, don't mind me. I love Rihanna down. Like, I love her. But, um... She had bigger up on Twitter. I think she posted a picture and was saying, like, you know, about time. She was basically, like, it was a landslide, I'm seeing. Like, she was out here dominating the election from when. And, she, I mean, it was due. I really just hope that, you know, she does what she, what the people who voted for her to do does. So, I mean, a little back, back story. She's 52 years old. She's a lawyer. And I don't know why the article said, since the country gained its independence from Great Britain in 1966. Well, you know, 1966, not, not too far ago. So um, it was a landslide victory, like I said before, and it was well-deserved, according to Rihanna. But she became the eighth prime minister and the fifth female head of government in the English-speaking Caribbean. The English-speaking Caribbean. She's joining the likes of, you know, sorry again if I butcher these names, the late Dame Eugenia Charles of Dominica, Janet Jagan of Guyana, Portia Simpson Miller in Jamaica, and Kamla Prasad Bissessar in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> um, big up again to Miss Motley. Um, I hope you come through for all everybody that voted for you. Because I know politics is politics, and I don't like to talk about politics too much, but politicians will do, will say what they, what they know you want to hear to get the vote. That is the point. But I really just hope that she come through and it don't become a situation like some other prime ministers that we will not speak of <laughs> with say something and not do, eh, whatever. Just, you know, so just hope she hold the thing steady and whatever. All right. Oh, I mentioned Dominica. For those of y'all who don't follow me on Instagram, why? But I was in Atlanta for Carnival Weekend, Memorial Weekend in Atlanta is Carnival. I said that word. Memorial Weekend whatever memorial weekend <laughs> i was in atlanta for carnival and mind you i was planning on just going to go walk up and have a good time and you know 
relax, have a weekend off. Because for those who don't know, I am one of those stereotypical Jamaicans. I have two jobs. I work full time at one and I damn near work <laughs> full time at the next one. So I'm just moving like seven days a week. I'm at somebody's job doing something. Plus, I have this and I'm a photographer. I I be doing a lot of shit, okay? Um, sometimes I'm not doing shit at all, but my mind is just going. So, I, you know, I took the weekend off. Me and my cousins went out, flew in, and, you know, we was turning up. I went to, what was it? Black Rave. Black Rave the Sunday night. I didn't actually go to Atlanta Carnival because these niggas wanted to um, follow, what's his name, Freeze International, and go to some other event that he was in, doing in New York from the night before. And some fuckery. So we ended up not going to Carnival. Um, so we end up going Black Rave the Sunday night. And when I said Dominica did show out, listen, I have to talk about this. Okay. Because I go to Caribbean parties down here and you know, it's the quote unquote more popular islands, the islands that more people know about Jamaica, Trinidad, Guyana, Gren mm, Grenada, <laughs> and you know, Bahamas, Barbados, right? Listen. I see St. Lucia flag. I see Dominica flag. I see USVI flag. I see British Virgin Islands flag. But <laughs> Yo, when I said everybody was in the fucking building, I said, wait a minute. In Atlanta? Like, this is my first time going to anything. Well, yeah, anything carnival related in Atlanta. Because I've been there for carnival weekend and we end up doing other things and not actually going to carnival parties and like, you know, Caribbean parties. But... Yo, like I think we went to what was it four two six one night, but that was that was ram to bumble. But I don't even know if they still have that. But yeah, so I'm I love the Caribbean. I love West Indians. I love my people as a whole down. Like yes, I big up Jamaica all day long because that's where I'm from. But at the same time, like I love to see all the flags together in one place. That everybody getting along and everybody walking up and you know like having a good time. So. I'm there, me and my cousins are there now. They're half Jamaican, half Vinci. So, <laughs> you know, I see St. Vincent flag in there. So I didn't even mention, oh, my son. <laughs> yo, when I said it was lit though, what I said, yo, I never, I haven't sweat so much in a party in a long time. I don't remember if I posted any videos of myself on Instagram. But I did post videos of the venue, like, of what was going on there. Um, Skinny Fabulous was there. Uh, and he was, he is an entertainer, okay? I love the fact that this man came down off the stage, clear out the fucking floor, stand up in the middle and said, all right, this is what we're doing. And he command the crowd and, yo, lit. They almost broke down the people them stage. I was, <laughs> I was just on the sideline, like, I'm going to just record this part. Y'all fuck this shit up. I got space to back up right but that was like mad fun my home girl was like hating because i was tweeting i was like yo dominica is live like shorties was out here in their little dominica bathing suit Dom it's okay is it dominica 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 Dom correct me okay because i know it's not the dominican republic that some people probably think i'm referring to no 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 it's the island of dominica 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 it's fa you know what I said? I actually talk to people from this island <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> I'm trash. I'm trash. I'm sorry. But, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I say bathing suit out here, we got the little flags. We got somebody else with the big old, like, five foot by three foot flag. Like, people out here, yo, they were out. And I was like, yes. I see a big old Lucian flag up in the front. I was like, yes. And then... Yo, St. Martin, St. Kitts and Nevis, they flags. Oh. <laughs> I was like, listen, yes, come through small islands. And they were shouting out all the small islands. Poor little Jamaica get about two, three shout outs. I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to wave my flag on, go on my own business. <laughs> and then they had somebody um from <laughs> Trinidad that came and performed. And, you know, she big up, you know, took somebody's flag and was waving. I was like, all right, cool. But for the most part, small, small island party, go on. Like, go on, yo. And I tweeted this. Something I love about the men from Small Island. Yo, they move when music play. It's not just stand up in a corner and just roll your spliff and stand up and chill and stand up on fashion. Yo, they are walking up. They are dancing. They are chipping. They are moving. Like, <sighs> if you do not dance, if you do not appreciate Caribbean culture and the music and you, you don't understand, like, <sighs> I feel sorry for you. But... 
I do not like going to parties and see, especially men, like seeing men just stand up while women are dancing. And then you try to come stand up behind a woman and you're not doing nothing. Move waist, like waist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wine, grind, like something, joke. <laughs> but yeah, I got, I got way, way, way off topic. But yeah, that was, I, that's not even what I want to talk about. I want to talk about Monday. Oh no, there was this girl, right? There was this girl at the Black Rave with some dreads, right? She was red and she was tall. I don't remember what flag she had, but she caught my eye. And I was like, ooh. And my cousin was laughing at me. I was like, hey, go ask her where she's from. And it was like, no. I was like, Ugh. So end up, next day, we went to SSS Red, which is, you know, Juve. <sighs> my poor flags. Like... Those three flags are literally now my Juve flags because the first SSS I went to, blue all over. Now this one, red all over. Like, I'm not bringing no clean flags to no more SSS nothing. No paint up nothing. So, whatever. Shorty was there again at the SSS red. And I said, oh, okay. So, I was like, all right, bomb. Now, mind you. This is a cool effect. I haven't had enough drinks <laughs> to go be social. <laughs> like, all right, this is my problem, right? I'm antisocial as fuck. Because I don't know. I just, I'm just socially awkward. I just, mm, talk to the people. Why? Ew, that's why I talk in front of the mic. Nobody's here. Like, fuck for no, I'm for the live show. But I'm a clad, no, <laughs> But so I'm just like, dog, I'm not going to go talk to her. Now, then these three guys came in, and I was just like, oh, my God, family is here. And I'm just looking around like, wait a minute. I see a couple non-straight people in the party. Like, we are outside in all this paint, and there are flags, and I see I see family. I had posted a picture on Instagram. I said, I see family out here, okay? So I got enough liquor in my system. Me and the wonderful gentleman that I made my, um, <laughs> my Man Crush Monday, my first ever Man Crush Monday, we had a nice time. We walk up, we wine, we dance. It was great. He ended up dancing with the rest of the girls that I was with. It was great. His friends were there. They were cool. We all, you know, great time. I, I Hey, Lola from Boston. Um, <laughs> I met a couple other people that were family. I got intoxicated enough to actually plug my podcast. I was like, hey, I got a podcast for queer government. Oh, shit. And I was just like, oh, that went over well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I need to do better with that. I was telling my producer that I need, like, uh, what is it? A publicist? I don't know what they call it. The people who talk for you when you go out. Like, meet people for me. Because I will literally sit there and stare at a group of people that I know would be interested in my podcast and not say shit. Because I am, I'm shy. That's, I think that's really what it is. I'm just shy. I don't want to say I'm socially awkward. I'm shy. Because once you get to know me and once, like, I get comfortable, like, I just, I'm cool, like, I break out of my shell, like, I'm a cancer at the end of the day, and, you know, I just, that's just, that's just me, that's just me, like, I have to get comfortable, and then we can have conversation and do whatever it is, we can talk, we can laugh, we can talk shit, whatever the case is, but, um, but yeah, so, (laughs) whoa, I don't even, how, how did I get here, what was I supposed to be talking about, but yeah, that shit was lit, SSS, the next one, I need to go to it. Um, y'all need to go if you've never been. It's a good time. Um, where is it? Do, 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 do. Oh, fuckery. Okay. So, the other day, while browsing the internet, my timeline flooded to shit with Cable 10 rape charge. I said, wait a minute. What? Cable 10? So, you know, I had to go do my Googles. Like, I had to go do my Googles. And ever since it dropped, it, uh, it's a bun me, you know, because there are articles upon articles. This is not just a rumor. This is something that really happened. So, it's been on my chest, so I have to speak on it. But, all right. So, Cable 10 has been slapped with a rape charge. Oh, shit. Fucking Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Bruh, Morgan Freeman has been me too as well. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I really don't know what kind of hand basket this world is going in to that place they call hell, but it's happening and it is fucking happening fast. Like, I'm never the type of woman to be like, hey, a woman is lying about, you know, rape, molestation, harassment or any of these allegations. And 
I also know that there's been doors open with all these new cases that have come out, women that are feeling more comfortable speaking up about the abuse and the terrors that they have faced and they're secretly living with. They now have a voice as a result of all of these cases coming out. And there are also women creating voices for themselves because checks get dropped. You know, people trying to avoid court cases, headaches, the images being tarnished, all of that. But with that being said, Morgan fucking Freeman, like... Dog, the first freed slave, the voice of God. Like, <laughs> this nigga plays so many grandpas, teachers, intellectuals, inspirational men. Niggas just can't be all the way right. Like, damn. Now, I'm not saying all of these things make him innocent. I'm not saying he is innocent. I'm just saying this man has played so many roles for people to look up to. And I was just like, fuck, nigga, damn. Like, you... We can't have nobody that we can be like, yo, this is a good person. Because, like... Niggas is trash. Fucking Bill Cosby was out here playing in the pudding. He have no consent to be playing in. And, you know, ruining people's childhood. They wish, dream, play daddy, whatever the case is. And now Morgan Freeman's name is in the mix. Like, I really hope justice is served whichever way it really should be served. Because I don't like the idea of false allegations. But rape is fucking real. Like, harassment, like, any kind of sexual abuse, any kind of abuse is real. Like, y'all shouldn't be doing that. Like, it's just just that simple. No means no. And if they don't offer, don't take. Like, no. But back to Capleton's a bomba blood clot. Like, this man. Have y'all listened to Capleton's music? Y'all lyrics and our persona, the uplifting and the worshipping and all this cultural shit... And you get involved? Like, okay, men, y'all need to do better. Women are out here scamming because they can. They don't, like, don't invite nobody to your hotel room, even if it's for a piece of paper to take to the fucking lobby. Unless you and her have an understanding. And even then, you still can't because whether you try to or you intend to, you have to be able to prove your innocence of false charges, like if false charges are brought up against you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying the, the what you call it, the charges are false, but I'm saying if you get put into a situation where someone like trumps up some false charges towards you, like you have to be able to get yourself out of it. Like don't put yourself in that position. Put like period, like just don't. And women too, like I know it's easy to be like, oh girl, don't go to his room because you know, but niggas don't rape like (laughs) like no means no like if you invite a girl to your room to braid your fucking hair to twist your locks to 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 fucking come out and hang out like that does not mean she's going to fuck you like that does not mean she wants to fuck you that doesn't mean she wants to have any kind of sexual maybe she likes your fucking energy Maybe you were cool in some form or another. She met you in the right setting initially. She was like, you know, bomb. All right, we can kick it. If this girl ain't never offer you no sex, don't think about sex. You know what I'm saying? Even if she did offer you sex, unless she is open and willing and involved and, like, consenting. Like... (laughs) Why do we have to beg for people for understand that rape is a crime and it is not okay? Like, outside of it being a crime, it's not okay. Like, rape isn't a good word. <laughs> Dog, this world is shit, man. Like, what the fuck? Okay, so Clifton Bailey, the artist mostly known as fucking Capleton, like, he got arrested for rape, right? So the story is, apparently... He was supposed to um, get his hair done in a hotel room. He was in a hotel room and, excuse me, he made arrangements with a hairdresser to get his, you know, locks retwisted or whatever the case is. Now, on May 2nd, the woman, the hairdresser, filed a police report claiming that Capleton sexually harassed her at the hotel in New Kingston, right? In a police report, she told the officers that she was contracted by him to groom his hair at the hotel on April 28th, and that's when he forced himself onto her and had sex with her against her will. So it's not even just, like, harassment. This is, like, forced sex. This is all the way. You know what I'm saying? So she didn't file the report until May 2nd. I don't know why they felt it relevant to report that part, but whatever the case is, right? Now, Cableton apparently went to the police station on May 2nd and filed a report against her saying she's trying to extort him. Three sides to every story, okay? So, Capleton was interviewed by the police officers on Friday, May 11th in the presence of his attorney and detectives 
And you know what I'm saying? Detectives say that they have enough evidence to arrest and charge him with rape. Fuck for no. So if he's found guilty, he can face 10 to 15 years in prison for the crime. Um, I mean, she's saying he raped him. She, sorry. She's saying he raped her. And he's saying she's trying to extort him. So, I, you know, she denied the extortion claim, saying that, you know, she's the real victim in the situation. But... <laughs> Listen, let's just hope justice is served. Like I said, justice needs to be served which other way, whichever way it's supposed to. Whoever is right should come out on top. Like, no pun intended. You get me? So, I don't know. Apparently, his rep is saying this is nothing more than someone trying to shake down a famous wealthy entertainer. And if the justice system is fair, then we have nothing to worry about. That's all I'm able to say because, you know, the matter is at the stance of the courts or whatever. They're confident that Capleton will be exonerated when this is all over. Let us hope so. But at the same time, if this does happen, it just, and it is accurate and it's not, you know, by chance, you know, because people like, we're not going to talk about that nigga, but people like to let people go free just because they like their music. You feel me? So let's just hope that if he is not guilty, if in the creator's eyes, he did not do this, that is a wicked Ras Umanana. Like, the man is 51. And if it is true and he did do this, yo, why are you raping people at 50? Like, why are you raping people? Like, oh my God, I can't. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> um, Please don't forget to follow us on all the social media. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Apple Music, Google Play Music, Anchor, Player FM. <laughs> like, I'm reading these shits off. But yeah, just, you know, SoundCloud, Pointless Talks. Pointless Talks, Pointless Talks, Pointless Talks. It's the Pointless Talks podcast. P-O-I-N-T-L-E-S-S-S-T-A-L-K-S. We are on the social medias. You can like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, on Instagram you know you can subscribe on soundcloud you can subscribe on apple music you can subscribe on google play music those are the top three platforms that i've been seeing people use if you use anchor fm and player fm and all the other options that we are available on like us there give us feedback rate us give us five stars you know you like us if you don't like us just don't say nothing just keep your bad mind to yourself you know bad mind never prosper so whether you got here on purpose or by fate thank you again for tuning in to the pointless talks podcast